Bobby, a radar, what a treat. What do you have for us today? Well, Brianna, the lab leak theory of COVID-19's origins gained tremendous legitimacy this week as the Wall Street Journal confirmed independent reports from friends of the show, Matt Taibbi and Michael Schellenberger, that the earliest outbreak occurred at the Wuhan Institute of Virology in November 2019. Patient zero are now presumed to be three Chinese scientists, least one of whom, Ben Hu, worked extensively on gain-of-function research, the manipulation of viruses to make them more dangerous, which was funded by grants from the U.S. federal government. Those cases occurred in November 2019, well before the Hunan wet market outbreak favored by some in the scientific community as the more likely origin story, and they occurred among the very people one would most suspect in the event of a lab accident. This is quite damning, to say the least. Anyone still clinging to an animal origin theory, remember the pangolins and the raccoon dogs? They're cute. Is running up against Occam's razor. Assuming the intelligence reports are accurate and that Hu and his colleagues did contract the earliest cases of COVID-19, the implications are fairly earth-shattering. Let's be frank. This would mean that substandard safety protocols at the Wuhan lab probably unleashed a killer pathogen on the rest of the planet, and the Chinese government attempted to cover it up. China, however, is hardly the only government on the hook. The lab leak also means that research paid for by U.S. tax dollars and vouched for by coronavirus czar Anthony Fauci, the nation's foremost advocate of gain of function, is partly to blame for a pandemic that killed millions of people worldwide. Fauci, the very person tasked with leading the U.S. response to COVID-19, was in charge of the government agency that gave WHO the gain of function research initially sickened, the, the researcher who got sick with COVID first, millions of dollars to experiment with bat coronaviruses. Information on the central role played by Fauci's National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases was made public by the White Coat Waste Project, a watchdog group that uses public records requests to scrutinize federal funding of science. The journal cited the organization's work, writing that it confirmed who's receipt of U.S. funds. We interviewed a member of that group on the show yesterday, so please go watch that. Now, concerns about the potential for catastrophic harm the, Ob uh, the Obama administration had actually paused federal funding of gain-of-function research in 2014. Now, in late 2022, Fauci sat for a seven-hour deposition admitting that exceptions had been made for gain-of-function research deemed vital to government scientists. And in any case, the pause ended in 2017. Meanwhile, numerous authorities, including the U.S. Embassy in Beijing, have raised concerns about negligence at the Wuhan lab over the years. Vanity Fair and ProPublica described the lab as a biocomplex in crisis. Well, this sounds like a recipe for disaster. Uh, here we are. The confirmation of the lab leak theory would also mean that all the mainstream journalists, establishment scientists, social media moderators who derided its adherents as racist conspiracy theorists, were stunningly, humiliatingly wrong. This should serve as a potent lesson to all the entities, many of them state-funded, by the way, that have made policing alleged misinformation their seminal issue. The misinformation cops probably got this one really, really wrong. Now, said cops include some of the most influential voices in the scientific community and expert commentariat. The New York Times lead coronavirus reporter, Apoorva Mandavili, previously described the lab leak theory as having racist roots. CNN medical analyst Leanna Wen lamented the theory's likelihood of inspiring anti-Chinese animus. Others in the media called lab leak a fringe conspiracy. Vaccine scientist Peter Hotez, who was recently feuded with Joe Rogan over Hotez's refusal or unwillingness to debate RFK Jr. on vaccines, well, he criticized Jon Stewart for daring to raise the issue in a kind of joking, serious but joking manner on an episode of Stephen Colbert's show. Let's watch. We do need to know the origins of COVID. So your issue is that, that John Stewart and others who are embracing this theory are just jumping the gun. It's not that it's not possible. You're just saying they're jumping the gun and, and saying this without the evidence. That, that's right. And they're putting the entertainment value of this uh, over and above uh, what's reality. And it causes a lot of damage because uh, a number of scientists who work on coronaviruses, including myself, uh, feel that we're being at, under attack right now. Boo-hoo. And then Meta, of course, the parent company of Facebook and Instagram, vigorously censored posts about the lab leak theory before finally abandoning this policy as the theory gained some mainstream acceptance in the summer of 2021. 
as revealed by the Facebook files, my own report on the constant communication between social media companies and federal health bureaucrats, Facebook took its COVID cues from the government. Now, all of this behavior, these efforts to shame or suppress individuals who are asking questions about the preferred narratives of government scientists now seem incredibly short-sighted. The Biden administration has committed, of course, to declassifying intelligence related to the origins of COVID-19, consistent with bipartisan legislation signed earlier this year. Frustratingly, the feds have missed the congressionally imposed deadline, which was last weekend. It is long past time for President Joe Biden and federal health officials to tell the American people the truth so that all responsible parties can ultimately be held to account. Because despite the brazen assumptions of so many media commentators, the lab leak theory does not have unilaterally anti-Chinese implications. On the contrary, it is the explanation for COVID-19 that incriminates the West as well. Yeah, I can't get over the extent to which this whole controversy is such an own goal. It was, it was a choice to make it into a partisan issue in the first place. Yes. There's nothing partisan about this. Where, how did it's COVID not happen? At all. Like who? Like mm -hmm. how did this should not be a gotcha in any by any stretch of the imagination. Except Honestly, it's for the that, if you had like a neoconservative, hawkish, anti-China agenda, you'd rather it be solely the fault of just an outbreak in China. Sure, <laughs> I mean, sure, but the point I'm trying to make is that the Democrats, by choosing yeah. to weirdly, emotionally, and politically invest themselves in natural origin theory for years, and specifically call people who are even willing to discuss lab leak theory, kooks and loons. I remember, I remember covering this shortly after I started my own podcast in like the spring of 2021, and the idea of having. Um, an expert on to even talk about an article he just written in The Guardian about lab leak theory was considered deeply controversial when it should not have been that case at all. And so now I'm still seeing people on the internet, on, on Twitter, kind of resisting the new reporting that's coming out, even as it's being confirmed by the same kind of mainstream corporate sources that they typically like and support. And it's, it's bizarre. Just, just at any point in this, you could just say, oh, well, I guess I was wrong. Moving on. But the doubling down is really something to watch. Right. It's uh, for some reason, and you're exactly right that it didn't need to be like this at all. This is a choice. But people are so bought into their framing. People like Peter Hotez, who he yeah. played that clip, who's, again, it, it was someone I, I've seen his face on television. I couldn't have told you what his name was before mm -hmm. this week. He's one of many, whatever, libbish, mainstream, COVID, talking head type people. Um, but he's been in the news a lot this week because he has been on Joe Rogan and right. he, he, they, they wanted to have this debate on vaccines because he's been so for vaccines. And, and he's, he's come under criticism for kind of shirking that debate. And then he said, I'm being harassed, I'm being stalked, I'm yeah. being attacked. In very much, you're attacking science if you're attacking me kind yes. of language. And then you see in that clip where he's talking about the lab leak theory, you know, it's wrong to joke about this or, or, or raise this question because it's an attack on science and it's making scientists' job harder. And like, what, what is this priesthood? Exactly. And he's devaluing science and the authority of people like him. Yeah. It's not just that he said, oh, it's, it's whatever he said about Jon Stewart. He also said there was no lab leak. It was all, it was all made up BS. Zero evidence for lab leak. I mean, zero zilch nada. I mean, like th mm -hmm. this is this is the kind of narrative that has been put out there. And there's absolutely no humi humility when new facts get revealed. And then you you have questions about why folks are skeptical just to fall in line and trust scientific authority. I've spent the last day on the internet arguing with people because I simply read some scientific studies by myself and actually invited scientists to come and weigh in and tell me where I was wrong or how you should interpret certain kind of data. And when you ask them specific questions, they typically, that so often what you hear is this, well, so-and-so is an anti-vaxxer. Not right. they, they are misreading this study or they are cherry picking studies and here are 10 other studies or a survey of studies that demonstrate that that one study was disproven because here's the science. They're never talking about, a sci about science. They speak in these broad, conclusive statements that are begging you just to trust them and their authority and not the words that actual scientists have written on the page. And I'm very concerned because there is a 
struggle for lay people to understand various terms and norms within the field. We need people who are experts to be able yes. to weigh in and translate some of this stuff or provide clarity on some of this stuff. And there is a total unwillingness to do it in favor of bromides that are overly broad and then don't give confidence to what actually has right. been uncovered as opposed to the narratives that we know that the mainstream media and some of these government actors want you to swallow. Right. And ultimately, this was, this was uh, I mean, th these revelations are coming as a result of, of journalism, frankly, of, uh, you know, the scientists, some of the scientists have said, well, you know, we've looked at the genetic profile of, of the disease and we, that, so it's, it's not going to be a lab leak. It, yeah. You know, it's something that, well, okay, so says you, but now journalists, again, mainstream, not just Michael Schellenberger and Matt Taibbi, but the Wall Street Journal, I presume other outlets are going to confirm this in the fullness of time, just as they ended up, you know, confirming eventually like the New York Post's Hunter Biden laptop story, all that stuff. Like it's going to get confirmed that these scientists got, it's a question of following the documents yeah. of, you know, that they got sick. Here, here was the funding grant. Here's the research they were working on that makes the conclusion inescapable. It's it, it, it was it, it's like stay in your lane, scientists. Like this was actually a job for journalists. I wish more had taken on that cause. But you had you know organizations like the New York Times, which does even though, as much as we criticize it, does great work a lot of the time. Getting a little bit hoodwinked. I mean, it's a lead coronavirus person had had this view of the lab leak as well. That was a racist conspiracy theory, and then they went all in on that. You know, the study about all oh, the genetic material found at Wuhan, the swab with the with the raccoon dog DNA raccoon has COVID. Dogs. You know, it just it's it's <laughs> you can get you can be very smart, you can be very thorough, you can be all for the science, but this stuff requires additional verification by by other people in the commentariat. And uh, what, a, what a frustrating place we've found ourselves in. But I'm, I'm glad what appears to be the truth now is finally, you know, we can all keep our eyes and ears open for alternative possibilities and new evidence to surface. Absolutely. But I'm having a hard time understanding how it couldn't be a lab leak if, if, in fact, those three are the first people to get COVID. I think you're right, Robbie. Great radar. Thank you. More Rising right after this.